Hey guys, uh, Master Fiji here with uh, my buddy. Damon. Hey Damon. Um, in the last set, Legacy Lost, we got a couple of cards that started uh, showing and hinting towards a very mysterious character. And in the flavor text of these cards and through some lore that we kind of picked up along the way, we assume that this character is Gil's mentor or father or something like that, right? Like yeah, a paternal figure. Everyone was thinking father. Yeah. So, finally, after uh, waiting past Legacy Lost, we actually had the character show up as a J Ruler. And from all of the spoilers and stuff like that, until the, the set finally came out, I was super excited that I actually pulled this card. And I think, Damon, you pulled like two or three of these? Two. Okay. Uh, two of these guys. And this is uh, Gil Alamat. And the interesting thing you can actually see right in the flavor text of its ruler side, it says, Lapis, do you truly believe yourself, my child? A pity. So, I don't know about you, man, but that kind of implies that he's actually not his real father. Mm, I don't know what's going on there. No idea. I mean, I think this is another case of we better call Murray. Yeah. Get that Get that DNA test. Yeah, you are not the father. <laughs> but uh, the whole Gil, all of that Gil Lapis, I don't know what that's supposed to be about, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking it's kind of like how the Japanese, whenever they introduce themselves, they always do their last name first. Yeah. Anyway, so this is our, like... Is is <laughs> is he the real father deck? Yeah. Daddy issues deck. The Mori deck. Yeah. Um, another really interesting thing about this card, and a, a little bit of uh, idiocy on our parts, mm -hmm. is that when we were first hearing the uh, spoilers for this card, we found out that apparently this dude has three sides. So then Damon and I are sitting down and going like, how does that work? How do they put three sides onto a two-dimensional card? And we we're like, maybe it comes in like a pyramid or something. Yeah, we were thinking like. You got the regular one, and then you got the extra one. It's like almost like a token that came. Yeah, kind of like in, in Magic, right? Like when yeah. you get that final ultimate or whatever for it's the like Planeswalkers. A, yeah, the, it's um, like a token. Place whatever token, such and such. It's the. Um, it's like a, a. Yeah, a token basically, but. Yeah, and they um, come off as like those the cheap kind of like no value cards. Yeah. In the which is weird because they're actually quite valuable. Yeah. Um, anyway, so he's got um, his ruler side, and apparently he's an emperor class. I don't think that's ever existed no. before, has it? No. And he's got zero judgment, and to play this ability only if you have seven or more mana counters on this card. And when we were first talking about this guy, we were like, man, to get to his final ultimate, which you actually see on the other side, and we'll show you in a sec, it just seems like it would take way too freaking long. Mm -hmm. But the way that we built the deck, it actually built up pretty quick. Like maybe, what was it, like turn five or six, you're already pretty close to 20 counters. Yeah. I mean, kind of the idea is supposed to be that you can use those things to cast ancient magic spells and you're supposed to use them along the way, but we have the deck built in that you don't really need to do that. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, I doubt you'll get there. If you do, then freaking sweet because, yeah. you know badass but oh my god dude um if you don't then you know whatever it's fine just the interaction is you between the creatures alone like you don't really need to get there and yeah we'll explain the interactions when we get to it but totally so this guy has energized white or black and he's got mana one so right off the bat if you're going first or second you're getting that mana one counter and he's got the ability remove a mana counter from this card and it produces any color and you can only spend this to play ancient magic cards. Um, now, an important caveat, and you'll see this card later in the game, or in the game, in the profile review here. Uh, even though with the creature typing on this creature is ancient, it doesn't count as an ancient magic. I made that mistake. Uh, Damas smacked me in the back of the head. He's patting me on the shoulder right now. Everyone, uh, you know, screw, screw Dayman. <laughs> I'm starting the hate for Dayman club here. Yeah. Um, yeah, every time I ha I do something cool, this dude goes like, nope, no, it doesn't you work. can't do that, you no. can't do that. It's like the, no, 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 no Mr. Master, no. Master Feature can't have nice things, no, 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 no. <laughs> Mr. Superman, not here. No, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Okay, dude, no. shut up. <laughs> No. And then the final thing is that this guy's got resonance for light magic stones or darkness magic stones. Another one of those things where I can't have nice things. No, it no. uses the word or, but it's no, no, they actually no. mean either or. Yeah. So it can only be even if it's a black, uh, uh, black. It's a darkness and white magic stone. It only it only counts for one. Yeah. And then you get to put one mana counter on this card. Okay. On the other side, we've got uh, Ebon Dragon Emperor Gil Alamat. 
and he's a dragon J ruler on the side, and he's got his judgment. Remove 20 mana counters, you know, the stuff we were talking about earlier, from this card, and remove all other cards you control from the game. Now, when they say that, they just mean stuff that's in play, right? They don't mean your hand. Yeah, just stuff you control. Just okay, so, like, yeah. wait, does that mean stones, too? Um, remove, blah, 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 and remove all other cards you control from the game. Yeah. That means, means stones, too? Yes. Brutal! I never even thought of it that way. Okay, but that, the uh, other side is just so ridiculous that it doesn't it's it's even, pretty janky. It doesn't matter. So you'll have your seven from having him on this side. You flip him over, and he's also got mana one on this side, which means that just by flipping him, and if you haven't you used anything, eight. you go to eight automatically, which is pretty awesome. Uh, he's got flying. Then he's got remove a mana. Same thing as the other side. You can use it for ancient magic spells. Remove counters that count for anything. Uh, and then he's got double the effect on the other side, which is resonance for light uh, magic stone or darkness magic stone, and you get to put two mana counters this time, which really, really, like, speeds things up. So, okay, here is the coolest mechanic in the game so far. So if you decide to remove 20... Oh, you don't decide, dude. Nobody nobody chooses the thug life. Look at this dude. <laughs> Look at this dude. Him. So, barriers, so you don't have to deal with black moonbeam, swiftness, precision, flying, and first strike... Uh, so chants in your hand become ancient magic in their addition to what they are, and you can play ancient magic spells for free. Yeah, what he said. Also, he's a 2020. Yeah. That's that's an important one because you guys know my absolute throbbing heart on for that one Cthulhu dude. Yeah. The strongest so resonator in the game the aside from The only thing the about being able to play stuff for free is that if you decide to play something with an awakening, you cannot pay the awakening. No, you just have to pay the... Just the, the normal amount. So, like, for example, there's a spell here that if you do the Awakening, it'll do 20 damage to the, the opponent. Uh, you won't be able to do that Awakening to deal the 20 to the opponent kind of thing. So Fair enough. It's almost... It's good. It's almost better to just keep it on the other side just for... Yeah, just keep him on his G ruler side. Yeah. Instead of, like, third but G ruler side. But, you know, if you manage to wean him down to, you know, 20, and they don't have flyers or whatever... And you have the 20 counters. Yeah, because he's got barrier of swiftness, precision, flying at first strike. So if you get him to this side and they don't have anything, just hit him for 20 and win. Yeah. At this point, it's like super mega overkill. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, let's do stones. Right. Okay, so for stones, we've got uh, two kind of filler cards. Two yeah. filler stones. Just just for the, the two left over that we don't really need. Yeah. Uh, we do have um, fire uh, casting cards in this deck, so... But they're um, ancient magic, so... Exactly, so we can cast them for pretty much anything on his... on either of his sides, because we've got the mana counters, but we've got them here anyway, right? Because we've, right now, only four... or two different types of white-black stones exist, right? So, we've got two of the magic stones of Scorched Bales. Then we've got four of the new dual stones, which are from, uh, this, uh, Return of the Dragon Emperor. So, it's the same thing as with all of the other, like, uh, pain, rocks. pain rocks. If it's not this particular dude, you're taking 300 life damage. Um, so it counts as both a light and a darkness stone. It can produce white and black. And then, it, you can also tap it, remove a mana counter, and then produce any color. And the awesome part about the stone is that when you do this, you can use it for anything, not just ancient magics. Mm -hmm. And then the other four cards, or the other four stones in our 10th stone deck, are just your usual magic stone of Heaven's Rift. Which is a sick metal band name. It is. I would totally go see that band. Yeah, Heaven's Rift. Cool, so that was our 10 stones. Okay, now we're getting into resonators. So for the, the one drop, we have um, Demon Orderly. Uh, so it's a one drop, 3-3. Three, three. Yep, we got four of those bad boys. Uh, and shoot, this card is a magic, or it's a darkness magic stone, which... We'll explain what that uh, will affect. Yeah, it's so we're running four of those. It's it's really dumb because we had to look at the ruling of this, and this is one of those situations where I just can't have nice things. <laughs> um, so I actually wanted to make this deck with green in it, and I want to use that one dude who's like the Crucibella's secret technique. Exactly, turns a stone into a ten ten, but it doesn't work because it's talking about card type magic, magic stone. stone. But this one specifically. Darkness Magic Stone, yeah. so it doesn't work. It's like com two completely different classifications, even though the only difference is that they added one extra word. Yeah. So anyways, the next card 
is Viola Obsidian Dragon Princess. So uh, it's a two drop five five uh, ancient slash dragonoid. Um, so pay a black. This card gains plus one plus one at flying until end of turn. You may spend uh, will to pay this ability's cost as though it were ancient magic card. So it can you can pay with your mana counters to just dump a, sh a ton into it and just buff it. Or from your hand, you can pay two and discard it for the inheritance. Your J ruler gains imperishable until on the turn. Uh, if your J ruler is the Dragon Emperor Gil Alamat, the dragon side, mm -hmm. you may pay two black less to pay that ability. This card actually, two. we've got two of them, and it's actually got like a lot of usefulness to it because essentially you can use its inheritance for free if you're on the proper side of the card, or if they've got nothing to block flyers, you pump. Pretty much like upwards of like 10, 15, whatever amount of uh, the mana counters you have, and you just hit them for a butt ton of damage. Yeah. Um, the next card is uh, the Dark March Hair. So it's an 8 8 for 3. Uh, treat this card as a light magic stone and a darkness magic stone, uh, just for the uh, resonance abilities. Uh, so resonance, so it counts itself for the uh, resonance of light and dark. Which is really cool. So upon entering by himself, you your resonators gain plus one plus one for when a light magic stone enters, and your opponent's creatures get minus one minus one for a darkness magic stone entering. And he does that himself, and then you play a demon and they get minus one, yeah. and stuff like that. So hypothetically, if you're playing this on like turn four, you use three to, to summon him, right? You've mm -hmm. already got plus one to all your dudes, minus one to all your opponent's dudes. Mm -hmm. You tap to grab a stone. That's going to be another... If it's like your yeah, Heaven's you Rift or yeah. whatever, you're going to do another minus one to all of your opponents and another plus one. And then if you have one of the demon dudes in your hand, you tap that one stone, play the demon, and just in the fourth turn, just one go, you've done minus 300 to your opponent's entire field and plus 300 to all of your guys. Plus two because uh, you need a light stone to get pluses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, because this yeah. guy's dark. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the next one is. Oh, uh, and running four of these just in case. Or three, three of these just yeah. in case you guys didn't see. Uh, Rachel Nephelheim Commander. She's a three drop ancient slash angel slash demon flying seven seven. Um, so resonance, darkness, magic stone. You may destroy turkey resonated total cost two or less. If you do, put a mana counter on your J ruler if it has mana. When this card is your field, Put target demon with total cost one from your grave into your field, so demon orderly. So you play it, this is in the grave, comes out of the grave, into the field, resonance, destroy, and yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. and actually when we were testing this deck against uh, Dayman's new Millium deck, it actually worked out very well because for the most part, most of the cards he had, like most of the resonators he had in his deck were two cost or less. Yeah. So like almost always when this thing was hitting the field, if I had one of these bad boys in my grave and then like I summoned it from the grave with this thing, I would get a creature, I would get two mana counters, depending on what side I've got this guy on, and I'll get to kill one of his things, which yeah. is awesome. And then the next one is a uh, Demon Captain Elegos. So it's a four drop demon flying 8-8. When this card is your field, put target demon resonated with total cost three or less uh, from your graveyard into your field. We've got three of them. So um, your ideal play would be to have one of these and one of these in the grave. You summon her, get her, get this dude, kill something with her, and then get two or three potentially, or four potentially, no, three potentially mana stones, mana counters. Because uh, if, if he's on his... Uh, Dragonoid side, you'd get two from this and one from that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's like the best combo. And what we do to ensure stuff is in the grave is we use stuff like uh, Blood of the Makage. So it's a one-drop chant. Target J slash Resonator gets plus eight plus eight in precision until end of turn. At the next end of turn, destroy it. So that's uh, just a nice way of just pushing for extra damage and then getting it in the grave. To then play one or play that and then get it back out. Yeah, and if you're using it on your little dinky demons or if you're using it on uh, Rachel there, then you're essentially also using it as like board control. Yeah, and then um, the next one we have is Shield of the Nephilim. So, uh, target resonator cannot be destroyed until in a turn. It doesn't stop the blood of the Kagi because it the blood of the Kagi says yeah it triggers afterwards. Yeah. So, but the awakening says 
uh, target that resonator gains whenever this card deals damage to a resonator, destroy that resonator, which is just nice to have. Pretty, Pretty much. We'll have three of them. It's kind of like those uh, Death Touch Cthulhu's from yeah. back in Curse of the Frozen Casket. And the awesome part is is that, uh, how many were running? Three? Yeah. The awesome part about it is that this is also an ancient magic, so we could cast, like, its actual, like, casting cost, and its awakening we can pay for with mana counters. Yeah. So the next one is Viola's, uh, what is that? Sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sound it out. You're passing it to me. The oh, kind of just, I don't know. Fuck it. I can't, I can't read apparently right now. Uh, Machinations. Machinations. I don't know what that means. Cool. So we're running four of these bad boys and it's actually really awesome because it's kind of like, um, free. It's totally free. What's the, what was the name of the, from the dark, from the madness or whatever? The, the Cthulhu destroy a thing and then get a plus one plus one counter um i can't think of it out of madness whatever so it's it's a one cast but because um ancient magic it's an ancient magic so your opponent discards a card put a one put a mana counter on your j ruler if it has mana so essentially it you could use a mana yeah. use this and then get another mana counter so it's free and you're using it for hand control running four of these it's an excellent card combo with this particular deck yeah next one is a. Uh... Ancient Heartfelt Fire. Yeah, uh, the interesting thing about this card is that when I was actually playtesting this deck against uh, Dayman's Millium deck again, um, I actually found out that I was using it more for like board control than I was for getting all of the mana counters. So, I mean, you can use it either or. Again, like versatility is king in this game. We're running four of these. It's a one cast Ancient Magic for red. Uh, quick cast, and it has choose one. This card deals 400 damage to target J slash Resonator, or put three mana counters on your J Ruler. And when you've got him on his dragon side, this accelerates your path to that 20 so much. So, four of these guys. Yep. Uh, next is Faded Reunion. Faded Reunion. If you're running black and you're not running these, you're not playing black right. Mm -hmm. And I love how I just tell people how to play this game. Yeah. You know, like, no, 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 creativity, screw that. Just yeah. do what I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're running four of these guys. Uh, it's a two cast black chant, uh, a black and a colorless. So you get to choose one. If you control uh, two or more darkness J slash resonators, you may choose both. Search your deck for a card, uh, then shuffle the rest of your deck and put that card on top of it or draw a card. So essentially this is pretty much just a tutor mm -hmm. if you've got two on the field. And with the way that this deck works and if you don't have ridiculously like aggressive like a red or something that's constantly controlling the field, you're almost always going to have those two yeah. darkness resonators. So four of these, super yeah. good. Also, you know, you know, Gil's daddy's on here. Or whatever he is. <laughs> and one black moonbeam because reasons. But not just any black moonbeam. Yeah. Full art magic. promo. Ancient magic. Ancient magic, yes. Yeah. Just super because good. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next is Invitation of Disaster. Oh, I didn't know you were in this deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Invitation of Disaster, also an Ancient Magic, super important. It's a three cost, two red, and one colorless, and you get to uh, choose one. This card, oh god, that, actually the writing of this is super bad in my opinion, but whatever. This card deals 800 damage to target Resonator. If this card was awakened, it deals 2,000 damage instead. Or, this card deals 800 damage to your opponent. If this card was awakened, it deals 2,000 damage instead. Like, ugh. Yeah, so the anyway, awakening is for 8. 8, which is kind of brutal because in total it would cost you 11 to cast yeah. this. But, but again, you get to 11 pretty easy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. By the time you flip this dude, he's already at 8, right? Yeah. So like, you cast another stone for another 2 and then play something from your hand and essentially you're already there. Yeah. So, for 20 damage, it's worth it. And then 2 uh, Erasure? Uh, yeah, Erasure. And you've got uh, Gil Alamat on the card too. Uh, destroy target non-magic stone card. Now this one's a little bit dubious as well because Damon had to look up the ruling on it. And or I haven't, I haven't looked it up. Oh, he hasn't I looked it up. Told... He was talking to a, a dude who talked to another dude who talked to a judge. Yeah, said that apparently it doesn't kill J rulers. But... Yes, but um, we don't have the card for comparison. I'm not going to look it up. But if you actually look up the uh, the new Alice. Um, what she says on the card is that she has like an ability where she gets to destroy a non magic stone non J ruler card and on this one it says destroy target non magic stone card and because they didn't do that specific or if they, because they didn't do that specification of 
uh, excluding J rulers on it, I'm assuming that it means it can do that. So if that's the case, this is uh, essentially a two cost more expensive Black Moonbeam with a lot more versatility because it doesn't just tra target your J slash rulers. It targets anything that isn't a magic stone. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think Dayman's looking up the ruling on it right now. Pretty sure that it does work, but we'll see. Yeah, it, well, it makes sense, right? If a card in this exact same set had to specifically say non-magic stone, non-J ruler, then if this one doesn't say J ruler, then it's got to mean that it, it can do everything. Except for magic stones, obviously. Okay, uh, yeah, this is the deck. I don't know, I was I was super psyched. I was super psyched that I got this guy in my unboxing, and um, I think that he's a really sick card. I don't think that... Uh, I'm I'm both a really huge fan and like kind of not a very big fan about this whole unfoldy thing because if you actually look you can kind of already see it like kind of getting a little chipped away. Uh, I don't know. And like if this was like can you imagine how heartbroken people who have like a uh, uh, what is it a uh, what's what's it when they're like silver what's that called? Oh the um Uber. Uber, yeah. When you get an Uber version of this, you never want to open it. You never want to open it because, like, you it's it's like folding a piece of paper. Even is one. There's gotta be. I want to. I want to Google search it. I'll have to Google search it. Okay, so this was Gil Alamat's. Uh, You're not my daddy deck. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have any suggestions for the deck, I've definitely seen it being built in different ways. Please leave comments and uh, suggestions, stuff like that. Just like usual, check for the uh, deck list inside of the descriptions, subscribe, and uh, keep building decks, guys. Thanks for joining Damon and I. You guys have a good night. Yep, see ya. <laughs> yep, see ya. Okay. I don't know.